We are going to do a reading comp passage, but uh, before we do that, I want to talk about how to review questions that you take uh, in a timed setting, right? So when you go take a test on Saturday and then you go home, <coughs> this is the ideal way to review the test uh, or a timed individual 35-minute section. This, by the way, is not easy. Uh, it takes a little willpower, but if you can do it, you won't have to take as many time sections. So if that's encouraging, isn't that the story of life though, right? Like, if you do what's hard in the short run, usually it benefits you in the long run. Anyways, <clears throat> here's what I would suggest. And this is what we'll do tonight as you go through this uh, reading passage. This passage happens to start with question 15. It goes on to 16, 17, blah, 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 blah. Now, as you go through this section, or this passage, timed, uh, you are going to encounter question 15, and of course you're going to answer it. And when you're done answering that question, you're going to have a level of confidence about how correct that answer is, right? If you're 100% confident, awesome. If you're 90% confident, awesome. But in some of these cases, you're going to be like, it's either B or E. It's either A or D. I just, I can't make a distinction between the two. I've gone back to the passage. I'm really stuck between the two. I'm arguing for A for this reason. I'm arguing for D for this reason. I think it's more likely to be D for whatever reason. You know, you make some decision in the heat of the moment. And you pick D, but you know you weren't totally sold on it, right? In that case, let's say these are your answers, A, B, C, D, E. You've crossed out B, C, and E. You're debating between A and D. You go ahead and choose D, but you're still a little unsure about A. I would put a question mark right there, okay? During the test. Because at some point you gotta move on, especially in time setting. On test day, you're not gonna hang out there forever. All right, so let's say you do this for uh, question 16. You end up choosing uh, B. I have no idea whether these are the right answers, by the way. <clears throat> um, and you feel totally good about it, so you don't put a question mark. Question 17, uh, you're again debating between two answers. You ultimately end up choosing B, but you weren't sure uh, actually about several of them, right? So maybe the, you've only been able to cross out E. Maybe you pick B. Well, of course, you would then put a question mark here. Now, you go ahead and go as far as you can go. The timer rings. The time is up. When the timer is done, uh, our inclination is to grade the test or the section, especially after doing a full-length test. You're exhausted, right? You don't want to do anything else except just kind of check answers. Let's see how it worked out. I would strongly encourage you to resist that temptation. Instead, walk away from the test if you can't do this right now. Tonight you'll be able to do it because we're only doing one passage. Right? I hope you have the willpower after one passage <laughs> to do what we're about to do. You go back to the questions that you are not sure about. And if you are down between two, you now have all the time in the world. The timer's over. Right? The timer has stopped. And you might end up rereading the whole passage as you debate these two answers, you may just end up rereading the first paragraph, wherever you think the answer is, right? And you think about it, and I need you to make a commitment. You either say, yep, you know what? I was right about this, D is correct. And I think it's right for this reason. Then you go down here, and you might say, you know what, I've thought about these answer choices again. By the way, if you had many open, I would strongly suggest just going through and working backward. In other words, crossing out everything that you know is wrong. Like, maybe when the timer's over, you're like, yeah, okay, C is definitely out. I feel good about that. C is definitely gone. Uh, A is definitely gone. I now feel good about that. That's out. Uh, so it's really down to B and D. And you know what? I just saw line 17, and line 17 in the passage confirms D. I now think the answer is D, but you don't know. You haven't looked up the answers yet, right? You haven't looked them up. But if you think it's D, 
then I would mark it in some way and then I would put an X here because basically what you're saying to yourself is, I think I got it wrong. Okay? Then <clears throat> you do that for all the questions that have question marks and then you grade it. And so really what you'll end up getting is two grades. One is based on what you did under the time pressure and two is based on whatever you changed after the fact. I'm hoping, this doesn't always happen, but I'm hoping that the after the fact grading gets to minus zero. Right? Like with the time, you're able to force yourself to figure it out. That doesn't always happen. Sometimes we still end up getting them wrong. We're like, yeah, 15, it's definitely D. And you look it up and it was A after all or something else. All right, well. You figure it out, we figure it out, we talk about it. But <clears throat> hopefully this is minus zero. Sometimes, you know, you felt good about 16, so much so that you didn't put a question mark next to it. But when you grade, it turns out that it was E. You're like, whoa, I felt good about that during the test, so I didn't put a question mark, but it turns out that I was wrong. You try to figure out what happened, okay? Bottom line here though, is that you're basically putting question mark next to, question marks next to the questions you're not sure about and then you are affirming or denying the answer you chose after the fact before you grade. Why do we do this? Anyone know? Why go through this pain and suffering? Yes, Brett. It helps you isolate problems that you might have. It helps you isolate problems you might have. It forces you to think through these problems in a way that you will not and maybe can't even think through once you know what the right answer is. It happens all the time. Jake? Well, maybe another reason is because, at least for me, once I figure out I got a question wrong, the question is like dead to me. Okay, just like, I can't think about it anymore. So this would kind of force me to, you know, work with the questions before that happens. Before they become dead to you. Yes. yes. Um, <clears throat> I think that's, that's, uh, a good point. I think a lot of times uh, questions that people get wrong can become dead to them. More often though, I think questions that people get right become dead to them. Sure. Right? Like, hey, I was debating between A and D. I, this, there was this uncertainty. I wasn't 100% sure that it was D. You get it right and you never look at it again. That's a missed opportunity. What was it that made D better? And so although this takes a little bit longer, takes a little bit of willpower because the gut reaction right after you finish the passage is grade, 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 figure out what happened. And then either have a little party, be like, yeah, cool, it worked out. Oh, dang, it didn't. Sometimes, you know, sometimes people figure out that it didn't work out and that's it too. Right? They're just like, okay, hmm, minus two. Let's see here. Let's go on to the next thing, <laughs> which is another lost opportunity. But... <clears throat> The most important thing here is that as soon as you know what the answer is, it happens to me and I've been doing this forever, there's this weird thing in your head that's like, oh yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> but n you try to articulate it and it's like, wait a sec, um, I actually, nothing's changed. <laughs> so I'm just trying to prevent that short circuiting, right? So that we can kind of press forward through the sludge, but then become better for it and hopefully not have to take as many of these passages. Sound good?